Hey Credit Warriors, Credit Shifu here, and I know a lot of things have been really hard for people lately financially, with obviously the coronavirus pandemic, all of the lockdowns, etc. people losing their jobs. So in this video, we're gonna go through three things, three things, not two things, three things that you absolutely must do to help yourself get out of financial hardship and put yourself on the road to future success. If you like the sound of that, please consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so you never miss a video. Let's get into it. So first of all, let's look at a few signs that you are in financial hardship. Now you might think this is obvious, but some people have let this situation go on so long that they haven't really realized what's happening to them. So signs that you are experiencing financial difficulty are living paycheck to paycheck with minimal or very fast shrinking savings, relying on credit cards for bills and thus paying credit card interest, missing payments on credit cards or other debts, and seeing your credit score go down. So those are four signs that you are in a downward spiral. And you know, trust me guys, I've been in this situation where you're using a credit card for your monthly expenses and it's really scary because you just see the debt ballooning and you do not know where the money is gonna come from to pay it all back. So that's a situation you do not want to be in. Now let's get into my three steps to get yourself out of this kind of situation. So number one, get your spending under control. Now this may sound hard, but trust me, this is the best first step to take when getting your finances under control and getting it to a level of spending that you can afford. And you can start doing this by making a budget. So the first step in doing this would be to go through all of your accounts, bank accounts, credit cards, and uh, note down all of the charges, okay? So you're basically tracking all of your spending. Don't just write down what you think your spending is, actually go through your accounts and see uh, what you're spending money on. So it's your real spending. And you're probably going to find a lot of useless things in there. Like maybe you'll find that you spend $100 a month on Starbucks coffee, or you're wasting $5.99 a month on CBS All Access that you signed up for for one show and the season's ended, but you just forgot the subscription and you're still paying that $5.99 every month. Or maybe you blew $39,000 on this taxidermy tiger. Now, as brilliant as an item that is, it's not really needed right now in the time of financial hardship. So this way you'll be able to pinpoint spending that you can cut from your expenses. You can use an Excel spreadsheet to write down all of the charges, or you could alternatively use a service like mint.com, which brings all your accounts into one place so you can see all of your spending on every single account in one display. Very, very useful, just does it automatically for you. And then you just cut out all of the unnecessary spending and make a monthly budget. Mint.com actually has a function where you can make a budget and also kind of bars to see um, if you're in, you know, within your weekly budget or not. Now using this method, you can bring your spending in line with the amount of money you're bringing in each month. Or if you can't quite get it down to that amount, you can at least get it to a level where you could realistically make up that extra money with a side hustle or a part-time job. Now, when we had our first daughter, uh, my spending rapidly increased, all right? Kids are expensive. So I ended up working at Trader Joe's, I think it was two or three nights a week, uh, and that brought in just enough money that we had a balanced budget. Now. It was hard guys, I'm not saying this is easy. Oftentimes you have to work very hard, albeit for a limited period of time though, to get yourself back into financial health, okay? So it is tough. But at least I wasn't accumulating new debt, I had things under control, and that is our next stage. So once you've got your budget under control, the next stage, number two, get your debt under control. Now we'll mostly talk about credit card debt here because that tends to be what people fall back on first uh, when they get into times of hardship. But obviously there are some more extreme examples like payday loans with much higher interest rates. But no matter what type of debt you've got, the principles discussed here are the same. So what you need to do is make another Excel spreadsheet listing out all your debts uh, with the amounts and also the interest rates on each card or each loan product. And these can vary quite a bit. Credit cards tend to charge between about 10 and 25% per year. And payday loans, well, they can charge you between 15 and $20 per $100 borrowed every two weeks. And that ends up being an APR of between 391 and 521%. To put it into perspective with the most extreme example, a payday loan of say $500 could be costing you as much as $100 every two weeks, which is, you know, it's really an insane interest rate. So if you roll a payday loan over past the two week deadline, that debt can really balloon and get out of control very quickly. So then the most efficient way to pay off your debts would be to start paying the one with the highest interest rate first, because that's the one that is costing you the most in interest payments each month. So if you have a payday loan that you've been rolling over with an insanely high interest rate, 
Uh, for all your other debts, just meet the minimum payments on credit cards and put all your financial resources into getting that payday loan paid off. Now onto credit cards. So the same principle applies. Once you've got that really high interest debt out of the way, start looking at paying back your credit cards and start with the one with the highest interest rate first. But with credit cards, you could lower those interest rates by transferring some of those balances over onto balance transfer cards. Now, balance transfer cards will give you a 0% rate on money transferred over for a period of time, usually at least 12 months, but some are as much as 15, 18, or even over 20 months, okay, in the most extreme examples. So try and get as much of your credit card debt over onto balance transfer cards as possible, and obviously start with the highest interest debt first. So let's say this was your highest interest debt, but now you transferred all of it to a balance transfer card. So now your new highest interest debt is this. So you pay this first and save the debt on the balance transfer card until the end because it's 0%. Now just a note on balance transfer cards, you may not be successful in getting a credit limit on those cards that covers your entire debt. So you may only be able to transfer, say, half of a balance over onto a balance transfer card because, you know, that's the credit limit they've given you. Uh, and then the remaining half of that high interest debt you would choose to pay first and then you would go through, like we've said, uh, going down uh, through the interest rates. And this way you pay off your debt in the most optimized way uh, with the least amount of cost in interest charges per month. So now that you've got your budget and your debt under control starting to be paid back, what is next? Number three, build your financial foundation back up. Now this is you coming out of financial hardship, perhaps you've got a new job or a side hustle that stabilized your budget, or perhaps if you were out of work, you've got your old job back, which was uh, you know, the case with a lot of people after the coronavirus pandemic of 2020. Um, and so the first step really on building up your financial foundation is to improve your credit score. I like to start with the credit score because it is an indicator of your financial health. Many companies use it to judge you. And basically, if you have a low credit score, you will get ripped off on future loan products or even, you know, signing up for a cell phone plan and electricity bill. You'll often have to pay a deposit, which you don't really want to have to do. So getting a good credit score is a great indicator of your financial health. Now, as you're paying off your credit card debt, you may want to consider using utilization as a factor to influence which credit card you pay first instead of just interest rates. So obviously you wanna pay off your really high interest debt first, okay? That principle stands. So any payday loans or anything that's at a really high interest rate, pay that off first. Um, but then after that, you may wanna consider, perhaps I should get all my credit card accounts below 50% utilization first. And then after that, um, I'll prioritize paying off the highest interest debt first because high utilization, like you know, maxing out your cards really hurts your credit score. So if you can bring them under 50%, that'll be a good start. As you start to bring accounts below 30%, that's gonna be really good. That's when you're gonna see your credit score really improve. Now, another way to improve your credit score and also lower your utilization uh, would be to open new credit card accounts. Now, I know this sounds counterintuitive and your score will slightly drop when you open a newer account, but as you have more accounts uh, reporting on-time payments each month, and if you do have to use a credit card, you can spend more evenly across a larger number of accounts rather than maxing one out. Um, that's all gonna help your credit score. And remember, if you don't really have a need for a new credit card account spending-wise, uh, you could just open one and buy one thing like a Starbucks coffee. No, no, not Starbucks coffee, we gave that up. Uh, maybe your Netflix subscription, or you might've given that up with your budget, whatever. Just a very small charge each month on that card and then pay it off immediately just to keep it current and keep showing those on-time payments each month. Next, if you do have negative items on your credit report, for example, missed payments, etc., you may want to try out credit repair. Now, credit repair is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, uh, but there are several books you can read, like Your Score by Anthony Davenport. This is a great book that helps you understand the principles of repairing uh, credit. I'll put the link for it below. Now, with credit repair, you probably, mo most probably will end up employing the services of a professional uh, credit repair company. But uh, if you read a book like this, you can actually understand the principles of what they're doing and kind of helps you know whether they're legit or not. Um, there are some people though who would be able to uh, kind of be proactive about it and do the credit repair process themselves, uh, but it is quite an involved and complicated thing that takes quite a lot of time. So it is kind of probably advisable to get someone with a bit of knowledge, you know, to get a professional uh, to help you out with it. Then lastly, in addition to building your credit score, to have a strong financial foundation, you may wanna start accumulating some savings, all right? So a survey by Charles Schwab showed that 59% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. So 
If you have just a, even a little bit of savings, you're better than 59% of the country. Now, generally financial advisors recommend having between three and six months of your monthly expenses uh, in a savings account. The coronavirus pandemic lasted, I think it was pretty much three months or so, maybe a little bit longer. Some states are slower to open up. Um, but you think about it, if you had three months savings uh, saved up, you would be covered and you would have had a stimulus check on top of that and any unemployment uh, benefits that you got if you received that. So, you know, three months savings, six months savings, it really makes sense. Now, even after you've bounced your budget, paid off debts and started building your financial foundation, um, it's a good idea to maintain that budget and also maintain those healthy credit practices just to keep this going. You don't wanna fall back into the trap and uh, screw yourself over again. Now, hopefully you've found that helpful, guys. Please leave your comments about improving your finances below. And if you do have some money lying around, maybe you've got stimulus money or whatever, uh, and you are interested in getting into the stock market, which is appearing to be rising now, although with a few ups and downs, it's still a great time to get in. Um, we have a great deal with Webull where you get two free stocks, one for just opening your account and a second one for funding your account, $100. Uh, and that second stop could be valued up to $1,400. It's the luck of the draw who gets that, so I do wish you luck with it. And if you're interested, the link is down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe if you're new. Give this video a like, and we will see you next time.